Hello, David. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. Thank right, you. OK. Um, I have been immersed in this now for like, everybody for 24 hours solid. Still pretty clueless, to be honest. So um, yeah. how much risk is there in Rishi's deal? It sounded quite positive to me, but you obviously think different. Well, um, I think there's been some great strides forward in terms of uh, the EU's given ground in a whole number of areas, uh, the green lanes, the red red lanes, the uh, VAT excise duties. But there's there's quite a lot of caveats in all of this. And I think like you, you know, there's a lot of reading to be done. It's better done by lawyers. I mean, I, what I find with lawyers is we can all read text directly, but lawyers say, ah, this bit of text contradicts that bit of text right over there. And that's what you need lawyers for, to, you know, to, to look at the whole kind of uh, universality of, of the deal, because there's so many papers uh, involved. Um, but it is a stride forward. It is positive. A lot of hard work's gone into it. Mm. I, I accept that. But does EU law still apply? And, and is, does the ECJ still apply? Does it? <laughs> well, um, you know, various lawyers, um, we've, we've had Stephen Barrett tonight, the spectator, come out to say, yes, it does. We're still being hocked to the EU uh, as it comes to laws. And that's worrying. You know, we, Northern Ireland is in the customs union for goods, still in the single market for goods, uh, not services, etc. Um, and we don't want to leave Northern Ireland behind. Uh, I was involved in the peace process. I know how important Northern Ireland is. Um, and, and there is a risk. You know, they've had 300 laws in Northern Ireland from the EU since we left, um, since the rest of UK, the GP, left the European Union. And, um, uh, you know, we don't want to leave Northern Ireland behind. And we don't want increasing diversification between uh, one part of the United Kingdom and another part. Well, that's the thing. I mean, the clues in the title is United Kingdom. So basically, Belfast should be treated exactly the same way as Bristol is, for example. But that doesn't seem to be the case. And I heard Rishi this morning saying, um, defending, obviously, is going to do that, the deal, saying that, you know, Northern Ireland has basically never had it so good. They've got the best of both worlds because they've got the EU thing going on, but also the United Kingdom thing going on, which got me thinking, well, hold on a minute, didn't we all have that before Brexit? I mean, what what, what did you make of what he said today? Uh, well, I know that's said a lot in Northern Ireland. I've heard it from businessmen I know in Northern Ireland about in the best of both worlds or whatever. I don't think that's the experience of non-business people in Northern Ireland, you know, those consumers who are not getting the same kind of goods now than they that they would get in the rest of the uh, UK. Um, and I think it does go quite a bit uh, forward towards sorting that, you know, uh, the commonality of, of goods on the supermarket shelves, et cetera, has been mentioned. So that's welcome. Um, but, you know, what we what concerns me particularly in this, and we don't know much of the detail, is, you know, this requirement, it seems, for UK regulation to be run past the EU. I mean, they call it consultation. But, you know, to what extent will they say, oh, well, you can't change the law, um, you know, that we can't allow that because it affects Northern Ireland. And, it, and you know, and, and therefore, I think this has all been designed, by the way, right the way through all the different manifestations the different ideas is to keep us tied to the EU as much as possible. And that's not the way to go. You know, we want to join uh, the largest trade deal in the world. It's not the EU. It's the Trans-Pacific Partnership, the CPTPP, as it's known. You know, and, and trade right around Asia, for example. We want a trade deal with the USA. And there are a lot of questions here, which are very technical, about SBS, for example, so, you know, for phytosanitary measures on, on plants and animals, which actually are very important to trade deals and could tie our hands when it comes to doing other trade deals around the world, and we don't want that. So do you think this is basically edging closer to rejoining in some way, shape or form the EU? Well, I wouldn't say it takes us closer. What I would say that it sort of keeps us in, uh, you know, it keeps us in with the EU law, keeps us in with ECJ. And unless we get some specific sort of reassurance on that, and obviously you have the ERG, I'm an honorary member of European Research Group. And of course, they, you know, I can't speak for them, but they have their star chamber 
uh, mm. of top lawyers like Sir Bill Cash looking at this. DUP lawyers are looking at it in, uh, with great uh, uh, depth, obviously. Um, so I think we have to wait to see their legal verdict um, and to decide on that because there are a lot of we've, we've had the spin. But you wouldn't actually buy a house just on the basis of a sales brochure. You would have to look at the legal contract. And that's basically the stage we're in at the moment. Yeah. So you're not quite popping the English sparkling wine yet or even the French champagne, obviously. The, the, the devil is very much in this detail. <laughs> and we want the French champagne in Northern Ireland as well and English champagne without lots of checks and uh, holdups. But no, I mean, seriously, when you take things like the Green Lane, which is a great development, you know, I wrote three papers under the May government on sorting the border issue out. And they told me in no uncertain terms, it was impossible to have these checks like mm. sort of green and red lane checks. You know, so we've actually advanced enormously since then. Um, but, but you know, the, 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 po the point is, you know, you, you still have like 21 items that can be checked for in the Green Lanes. Uh, not 80 as as now, but uh, 21. And so there are questions about, well, how, you know, how much is this still tied up with EU law? The trusted trader scheme, which is used like America and the Canadian border um, and elsewhere in Europe, um, allows, you know, Guinness lorries or Kerrygold or whatever it is to move freely back and forward because you know what they're about. They're reputable companies, reputable drivers. Yeah. Um, so it does involve, again, a bit of paperwork and red tape, those green lanes. So, again, it, it, it does come down to the detail. I think all of us have to wait to see what the legal verdict is.